And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ephemeral Plaza. This is the very popular deck that I'm sure you've seen in Ranked over the last few days that a lot of people are playing. We got a donation to go ahead and try it out ourselves. So it's going to be our next donation deck. This is Lucian, Hecarim with the Grand Plaza and a whole bunch of Ephemerals with Shark Chariot, Onslaught of Shadows, Haunted Relic. All of these ephemeral cards are much, much better with the Grand Plaza, giving them plus one, plus one in Challenger, since they would die anyway. When you have, when you pair that with a card like Haunted Relic, that would make three um, of these Unleashed Spirits. They now are all 2-2 two -two with Challenger. If you have a um, Soul Shepherd in play, maybe they're three threes. And of course, all those ephemerals are awesome with leveling up Lucian. And, and the new Lucian is really powerful, how whenever it levels up you can immediately get the attack token again if you have another thing die so if your Lucian is at like two out of four to begin with you play that haunted relic to get the three ephemerals then the first two die to level up Lucian, and then the third dies and gives you the attack token again so that's um you know really powerful combination and then of course you have hecarim at the top end also so this deck's been looking really good uh, very impressive playing against it we're gonna see how it is playing with the deck so Let's uh, you know, go on over to the dark side with the ephemerals and try them out ourselves. Let's see how it does. All right, let's go. Oh, predictions. Zoe Leeson. All right, I'm going to keep Shark Chariot and I'm going to keep Onslaught of Shadows. No, we could probably just mulligan that too. Definitely mulligating the, the, the other three mana cards, but you know, like we want to find our Grand Plaza, we want to find our Lucian, um, you know, cards like that. Like a lot of these other cards, whether we have Onslaught of Shadows or Haunted Relic, very interchangeable. We don't necessarily need to keep one because we could just mulligan and find the other. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. I will not be alone. I am prepared. And of course, Pale Cascade's a card. Huh. Speaking of cards, Hush is also a card. Cool, no Hush. So my plan is to play Soul Shepherd on their turn. Ooh, now we got Lucian also. And then, oh, I can't, I can't just go double Haunted Relic. That was kind of my plan was just play double Haunted Relic, but that's not really a good plan because. You can only go six across. <laughs> you can't go like 12 across. I guess I could do one Haunted Relic right now to almost level up Lucian. And then I do the other Haunted Relic next turn. All right, let's draw two cards. Damn soon. Well, Grand Plaza's pretty good. So they're gonna Spell Thief the Glimpse Beyond. It's been my only spell so far. So yeah, they can have a they can have a glimpse beyond if they want. That's fine. Please no notify. Just let it happen. Yeah. Notify does seem really good these days, though. With with you know like this deck being real popular. And then also, you know, Go Hard. Obviously, Nopify has been really good against Go Hard, but, like, is it good against other stuff? Well, it's also really good against this deck. This is mercy. Uh, 
don't know. They could hush Lucian. They could hush Lucian right here before blocks and then kill Lucian. That can't be worth it. What's up, Choo Choo? Six months. Where are my emotes? There we go. Get some high boats in here. Thanks for that resub. Oh, that uh, I didn't update the sub goal from yesterday. That five out of five, that was yesterday's. That's our first up today, one out of five. Alright, so the stun means I don't get the attack, you know, like the turn's already over, so I don't get to, act to attack. So that stun was a. Uh, that was definitely a good card. Gems are superb. Bad for the teeth, though. Bad for the teeth, though. Um, let's go with. You. So we know they have a Glimpse Beyond in hand. And then I'll Glimpse Beyond one, so we get the attack token. Oh, crystals. Or I can just simply block. Darn. Because if I blocked, I would have been able to play the Grizzled... You know, if they would have let that block happen, I would have been able to play the Grizzled Ranger. This deck's pretty powerful. Lucian with all these cards is really good. Yeah, because they're they're just kind of dead, right? Because like, so we have both of our ephemeral challenge their two things. We hit them for 14, and then it's our attack again. You know, immediately we can open attack or kind of do whatever after that. Mirror match. I'm going to start by mulliganing. Look for Lucian, look for Grand Plaza. There's Lucian. As far as the four cards go, the one that I was thinking about keeping more than any other was the uh, Onslaught of Shadows. Push back to darkness. This is mercy. I don't think it makes sense to attack Frizzle Ranger into those. just the Grizzled Ranger because it's the Scout. But, yeah, I guess with me casting you know, with me casting that now it doesn't make, you know, yes, yeah, so now I could have attacked with both and nothing else. Interesting. 
So we're going Lucian, Stalker, Stalker, Relic. Don't get in my way. I can, so I can level up Lucian, but I guess that's it. I can't have, I have to have five things die to attack again. I can have four things die. I guess I can have five things die if I replace Badger Bear and replace Grand Plaza. It may not be worth it though. them down to negative one. Oh, maybe I should be playing another Ever Evershade Stalker. That's still negative one. That doesn't change. Yeah, they... So they just... They just didn't value their life total. They didn't... Oh, right. No, it does, that does change. Oh, yeah. So I should have played the Evershade Stalker. Yeah, maybe I should have. I would have played it over the Grand Plaza. That is not a good decision. Right? Well, at least, at least attacking is a bad decision. They can do that, but they shouldn't attack. Oh my god. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Shouldn't attack. Right? Well, let's see. No, because that, all it that does is just level up Lucian. Okay, never mind. Okay, man, this is this is just kind of crazy of just like all the different possibilities of all, all the stuff with like leveled up Lucian. This is crazy, kind of figuring this up, this all out. Right, then that happens. Okay, I guess I need to play the Scourge. See, I th I thought I was going to be able to play this, and they would play something else, and then, then I'd play Scourge, right? Like, I, But they attacked immediately, and so they punished me there. So now they win. So now they get now they get the multiple attacks with Lucian. Accept your fate. Definitely learned a lot with this mirror, though, right? Like, I definitely learned a lot with, with just, like, these last couple of turns of, of just sequencing with all these cards and everything. So, um, you know, I'll be more comfortable playing this in, in these kind of mirror matches after this. This is a, a good learning game. What you, What's the point of holding back attacks? What do you mean? For, like, my opponent? Well, because my opponent's going to get additional attacks. Now they have the challenger for the next thing. Because they want they want to have this challenger for my dark for my dark water Scourge. Does death follow me or peace? Which no matter what I play, like I play one thing. Yeah, well, they just have Hecarim anyway. So. Okay, back back to Zoe Lee Sin. I don't know if I played against Zoe Lee Sin before this, but now it's two out of three games. All right, cool. We got Lucian. Um. The rest of the cards, you know, give it or leave it. Like they're perfectly fine. They're also not really necessary. The strength of our deck is Lucian, Grand Plaza, and then Ephemerals. And so, I guess as far as Mulliganing goes, we can dig for those because all the rest of the cards, like, okay, we could have a Shark or we could have a Shade Stalker. Eh, same kind of thing. Don't get in my way. We each hold a world within. No room for doubt. Your lesson begins. Long. 
Super cool star chart. The spirit gives to those who listen. Double Eye the Dragon can be pretty messy. Oh, that's a really good sharp sight against Zoe. All right, let's start here, see what we get. Swing low, Shark Chariot. And I guess I'll just play double Shark Chariot. Get two of them in play. That can be pretty good. Because now whenever we go, you know, with our Ever Evershade Stalker or something else later, they'll bring back the Sharks. And of course the Sharks dying help level up our Lucian. Could attack with the Lucian. A little scared of, you know, like Hush, Pale Cascade. So I don't know if it's completely necessary or not. Sparkle Fly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite songs. Swing low, shark chariot. Ancestors await. I'll just block there. We'll take one from the sparkle fly. We don't need a sharp sight to block that thing. <laughs> Every time you play Rune Weaver, I sing Dream Weaver in my head. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me with Shark Chariot for sure. I can't even like say like. In my head, all I like whenever I just see that word, I just think shark chariot. Can't even change that up at all. All right, so Hecarim is like the best card to play, right? Like obviously, like you know, just play Hecarim. The one thing about playing Hecarim is they are a concussive palm deck, assuming they are like the other decks. And so if I go Hecarim, they go concussive palm and stun my Hecarim, and then I get like no attacks. Or if I just play like Dark Water Scourge plus Evershade Stalker, if I just like, you know, play both of these, they're not going to be able to stun both of them. And so I want to do that. I mean, I guess they could stun both of them. Whoa, FEMA with the raid. See, look at that, Concussive Palm. So smart. Thank you, FEMA. Welcome everybody from FEMA stream. We playing some Runeterra, having some fun. Another and another. Um, probably shouldn't let them... Let's see. Okay, if they hush Lucian... They hush Lucian, I have Sharp Sight still. So we're still good, even through a hush. Yeah, so I think it's a free attack. Because there's a good chance that they don't hush Lucian, but then even if they do, I have that. The dragon binds us. You cannot win. Your lesson begins. We'll get an additional attack with Lucian. But I don't have any more ephemerals to bring back the sharks. Um, would I trade a Soul Shepherd for like the 3 2? I don't know, I guess so. Because otherwise the 3 2 just blocks the Lucian. So, yeah, we, we don't really need both Soul Shepherds in play. By attacking with Soul Shepherd, it kind of forces them to block with that. Sparkle fly. What is gained when we return malevolence? What's up, TA Biolog? Hello, hello. I bear a message from Oh hey, what's that? Hey Zoe. Mm. 
gems are superb. Bad for the teeth, though. Yeah, definitely bad for the teeth. I really hope they play something that kills my rat. I was really hoping they would play something that kills the, the Soul Shepherd so I gain an, an additional attack. Alright, and I'm going to be open attacking. I call this constellation the jump rope. The jump rope? <laughs> I guess that could be a jump rope. Breathe in, breathe out. <clears throat> and we'll gain an additional attack after this. I won't attack with Lucian because of high shot. Don't really need to. I guess the hush keeps us from attacking again. The dragon binds us. Fair enough. Glimpse Beyond or Lucian are my two best draw steps right now. Glimpse Beyond or Lucian. So those would give me an additional attack. I assume they don't have the ability to kill me right now. That could be a wrong assumption. there. So that really makes sense to play anything. Zagala. Hope we're doing good today. Merry Christmas Eve. Okay, so I guess the play is to assume that they would have a hush, and what would we do against hush? So they don't have hush, they're probably losing. We'll probably get this in play first. Ephemeral Scout with Sharks, and we still get to attack again, even though that's kind of weird because we're attacking with non-Ephemerals, but I guess because we declared the attacks with only Scouts. There we go, GG's. 
and then we'd be able to attack again with uh, with Hecarim. All right, we got another mirror match. Prediction has started. Okay, like before, I think that we kind of know that, that Lucian and Grand Plaza are the most important cards. Glimpse Beyond also pretty important, but I think that just Lucian Grand Plaza are too important. The hand that I just mulliganed is better than this hand. This hand is pretty bad. But it will look a lot better if we find the Grand Plaza. The Grand Plaza would be a wonderful draw step. Come on, Garen, give us the Grand Plaza. Thank you, Garen. That was so kind of you. That was so kind of you. Merry Christmas to you, too. So suppose we can only kill one of these Bark Beasts, because the other Bark Beast turns into a 3-3. Three, three. Um, but we'll make it a 3-1. Right, like, whatever, whichever Bark, you know, once we kill one Bark Beast, then the other Bark Beast is a 3-3. Three, three. So turn five does not allow us to play Hecarim. Okay. Alright, back up to 13. That's very good. And they only have two cards left with us getting rid of that Iron Harbinger. If they have a Hecarim, we're dead. Dark Water Scourge, we're not dead. We're not exactly alive either. Still not dead. We will be able to open attack with Hecarim and friends. Alright, GG's. We had Hecarim. Okay, Lee Sin for the third time. This is crazy. So we just played against two mirror matches and three Lee Sin Targon decks. That's kind of crazy. Um, I mean, Hecarim's really powerful, but we don't get Hecarim until turn six. I do like that we have the attack token on turn six, so that does make Hecarim more valuable. That does make Hecarim more valuable. No, I'm still going to mulligan. Perfect. Okay, so we have nothing on turn one, nothing on turn two. Bank the spell mana. Turn three with their attack, we play Grand Plaza. Turn four, we can go Stalking Shadows or Onslaught. 
and then turn on Nightfall and then go Evershade Stalker, Evershade Stalker. <laughs> yeah, everybody voted win once we had Plaza in opening hand. I can also make them waste all their mana and not attack. That's probably not worth it though. I don't know. Could make them waste all their mana. And simply not attack. Don't worry. Yeah, maybe maybe that would have been worth it. Blocking allowed. All right, I'll just play these. These can block a little bit. To protect all, never submit. No farther. They can block a little bit. Six mana. Yeah, they're trying to keep the Steric alive. What is gained when you return malevolence? We go, we go, we go. All right, so I can continue to play more Evershade Stalkers. Or I could play this Haunted Relic. So the Haunted Relic gets countered. Let's see, basically, do I think they have a Concussive Palm or a Nopifier Deny? It's more likely that they have a Nopifier Deny than a Concussive Palm when they just played one Concussive Palm. Tapped out. So we'll kill the Eye of the Dragon and the Taric. And of course, Bark Beast is a one mana 5 5 challenger. Because that's pretty fair. Grand Plaza is real fair. All right, we're still looking good, even with that sh Stalking Shadows completely whiffing last turn. We can try again. Okay, Grizzled Ranger is interesting. Mm. I'll pass. We can take six. Judgment awaits. Turn up eight mana. Yeah, yeah. Down, will you? 
Attack with the two scouts, bring back the two sharks. Sharp Sight's incredibly good. It's honestly maybe too good. They, I feel like they've made. I feel like Sharp Sharp Sight and Pale Cascade are maybe too good. Uh, with the last, the last expansion with these two mana cards. Um, it's so efficient. Like two mana plus two plus two is pretty good, but then I can block Elusive also. Really good. Actually, what I should have done here is Haunted Relic and then have one of these replace a Grand Plaza, but I don't think it really matters. I mean, I guess I don't actually have to really go that wide with me getting the Sharks anyway. Um, I could have gone the Dark Water Scourge to kill their Arbiter of the Peak, but I don't think we necessarily need to kill the Arbiter of the Peak. I'm just going to go wide with the two things instead with the, the two Evershade Stalkers. Yeah, Ephemeral Scout bringing, bringing Sharks along. That is really strong. <laughs> yeah, we have, we had, we had a lot of ways we could win this. Once they spent five mana on a Will of Ionia. Sorry, opponent. Grand Plaza too strong. So it looks like we're gonna go four and one, beating all three of the Lee Sin decks. Our opponents basically also never really played Lee Sin. The Stalkers are awesome. Yeah, Evershade Stalker is really good in this deck. I think that's a that's a perfect two of. You know, you can find that card with the uh, with the, the the other two mana card that helps you dig a little bit. It's perfect. You can throw them out and level up Lucian at the end of your opponent's turn too. I'm very impressed with that card. Uh, but anyway, that's Ephemeral Plaza. This deck is really, really good, isn't it? Though, like. I mean, we only did... So we played against three Lisa Index, won all those fairly routinely. I mean, there was ones that were got a little close. But then we had the two mirror matches, which were both pretty close, and we won one, lost one, um, you know, because they're, they're mirror matches. But, yeah, like, it's... This deck's good, you know, like, Lucian with all these Ephemerals is really powerful, and then with Grand Plaza, super powerful. So, yeah, you want, you want a real good deck to, to play? This is, you know, this is a really good one, you know, as far as ranking up is concerned. Um, this is this deck is why in our Tar Targon decks we've been playing the three mana, the Divergent Pass. Three mana, destroy or draw a landmark, even if we don't really even want to draw a landmark, but we have to because of how ridiculously strong the Grand Plaza is. And it just works perfectly with these ephemeral cards and these ephemeral cards that allow you to go wide. So there we go. Um... Ephemeral Plaza. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and let me know what you think of the deck. If this has been a deck you've been ranking up with, let me know how it's been going. Um, how do you like it? What do you think of Iron Harbinger? You know, like that card uh, instead of like Senna or just anything else about the deck. You know, how has it been going for you? I'd love to hear about it. All right, but that's it for Ephemeral Plaza. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.